Islam, the best people that I have seen in the Muslim world, you know, Sayyidat Kaab said to my mom, oh, uh, I wanted to meet Sheikh Hamza in the Emirates, but he goes to visit the princes, right? Every time I go to the United Arab Emirates, I visit an imam there who lives in a little hut. He's one of the poorest people I know. He gives all his money out to his tribe back in Mauritania. He's a great scholar, a beautiful man. And when I go to his little house next to his masjid, the love that he shows anybody that walks through that door this is the love that I've seen in the poor people around the Muslim world. I once took a group to Mauritania and, and Ibrahim Asiofa was with me, so he'll confirm this story for you. We traveled and we, we got to a spot, it was raining and the, and the jeep got stuck in the mud, which we had been told might happen by Murabta Ahmed Thal that day earlier. He said, when you get to Isbir, which means be patient, that was, there was a little sign there. It said, Isbir, and that's where we got stuck in the mud. <laughs> I'm not making this up. You couldn't make this up. He said, just go to the right and walk for a while, and you'll, you'll find some people that will help you. So we did what he said. There was a tent there, and there was a shepherd, a Bedouin shepherd. And it was so windy that night, and Mauritania people who have been to Mauritania know how windy it can get. We went to sleep with that man holding the tent up. After he'd sacrificed a sheep for us and fed us, he was holding the tent up. When we woke up four hours later to pray Fajr, he was still holding the tent. And I remember Ibrahim just said to me, was he up all night? I said, he didn't want the tent to fall on us. I mean, though, to me, those, those are rich people. They're, you don't need Prozac in the Mauritanian desert, because they're not depressed. The wealthier you get, the more Prozac you need. Because you have so many humum and humum. People know this, people that have been successful. I told somebody tonight, he said he lost all this money. I said, honey and lek. You know, congratulations. Because it's just headaches. And then you have the guilt, you know, if you're like me, I was raised by a very liberal mother, so I have all that liberal guilt, you know. It's an unjust world, I shouldn't have all that I have, you know. So that, that makes it bad too. But it really, it's tough when you look around the world, what's going on. You've got gangsters now, we just had a Muslim group. To who read that in England about that? About the, these groomers that took these young girls, and, and, and 14, 15 years old, turned them into prostitutes. It was a Muslim gang. They all had names like Muhammad Khan and Ghulam Ahmed. And it just makes you sick to your stomach. What kind of people? People have no rahmah in their heart. How could you do that to a human being? And now in Mexico, they've got the same situation going on. All this human trafficking. They estimate now, the United Nations estimates there are more slaves today than ever in human history. And most of them are in sexual servitude. More than any time. We just had a building collapse in Bangladesh. And Walmart, don't shop at Walmart. I'm telling you, do not shop at Walmart. Don't shop at Target. None of these places. I'm serious. We need to stop supporting these people. And just, you can't change them through legislation because they have bought the legislators. The only way we're going to change them is where it hurts them, which is the pocketbook, because that's the only thing they care about. They don't care about human beings. They care about the bottom line. And I really think we need to be ethical shoppers because every time you buy something, you're making an ethical choice. And I told people about the Better World Buying Guide. We should do these things. If you have, Berkeley is a fair trade city. It's, it's one of the only five fair trade cities in America because many of the shops in Berkeley are committed to fair trade. Fair trade coffee, fair trade chocolate, finding these out. We can afford to do that. It costs a little more at this stage, but this is how you have to raise consciousness in this country. We should have Muslim clothiers that make ethical clothing where people are paid just wage. Hershey, you know Hershey chocolate? Hershey, Hershey Pennsylvania is named after him. He had factories 
in Puerto Rico and he was a Christian man who refused to pay the Puerto Rican workers less than he paid the workers in Pennsylvania. They had the same standard of housing. This can be done. It's not a utopia. It's just basic human decency. But you have to educate people. You have to change the way they're being raised. You have to change the way they're thinking. This is what our Prophet ﷺ did. But if they don't have mercy in their hearts, there's nothing in our religion for them. The Prophet ﷺ, when he kissed the child and the man said, we, you kiss children? He said, I have 10 children. I never kissed them. He said, I have nothing in my religion for somebody who has no mercy in their hearts. There's nothing there. I can't do anything for you. You have to have a basis. And whatever that is, if you have even a little bit, you can grow it. When you learn, you, your brain grows. You get dendritic. You get all these connections that begin to move. We know about neuroplasticity. You can change your mind. You can change the way you think. I just got a letter from a lady who, a recent convert to Islam. She was in Mecca with us. And when we went to visit the masjid where the Prophet did his bay'ah, I told the story of Ismail. And Ibrahim, when he came to visit Ismail, he wasn't there. His wife was there. And he asked her, how are things? And she said, they're wretched. We live in a horrible place. There's no food. It's dry. It's terrible. And he said, when your husband gets back from hunting, tell him to change the threshold of his house. And, and he left. When Ismail came back, this is in the Sahih. When Ismail came back, he said, did anything happen? She said, an old man came, Shaykh Ajuz, an old man. That's how she described him, old man. Came, what did he say? She told him. He said, go back to your family, you're divorced. Then he married a second woman. When Ibrahim came to visit, as Allah planned it, Ismail was out. He had to hunt every day because it was a sustenance living. He asked, how are things? She said, ni'm al ahwal. What blessings we're in. We have everything we need. It's such a blessed place to be, this, this valley. Nothing was different except her state of mind. That's all that was different. And Ibrahim said, tell your husband to hold on to the threshold of his house. And so when he came back, Ismail said, did anything happen? She said, there came a very dignified sheikh, sheikhun waqur. See, even looking at him, she saw something different from the first one. It's very subtle in the hadith. But this is what she saw. She had an inner light. And she is the great, 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 great grandmother of our Prophet Because that's who Ibrahim needed to be sure that she could carry that blessed seed to fruition. Because that's the child that's going to be raised by that woman. You have to know who's raising your children. What kind of an attitude they're giving them. Are they complaining all the time or are they in a state of gratitude? This is the state of mind. And that comes from understanding. And that's what happened. This woman who wrote me this letter, she said, as you were saying those words, I felt something come up inside me that was so powerful because I realized I was that first woman. And then she said, but that's when the miracle happened because I suddenly became the second woman. And from the rest of the trip, she said, she just saw miracles and blessings. She had been complaining and talking about this and that. And you can, if you look at the outward of the Muslim world, it's a disaster. But really, it's a disaster. But if you recognize what these people have, you will begin to see the beauty of what this religion does to people. You'll see the sacrifices. You'll see the miracles happen. Wallahi. You'll see it. Because it's the way you're perceiving things.